Welcome everyone to one of the final videos in the marathon and wrapping it up I'm gonna dig deep and talk about film, uh, horror films and whether or not they have just gone down the toilet. So we're gonna cover a variety of different things. Um, you're just kind of looking, mostly looking at the most recent films you know, between 2000 and, and now and just kind of dissecting bit by bit. Um, are they too violent? What's went wrong? And we'll look at some good ones as well. This is my good friend Kevin here. He has helped me with previous videos. Um, he helped us shoot the one for the Cuckoo's Nest one for the 70s marathon, and he's also a film student, so yeah, we're both film students. He was at a different university than I do. Better university. A better, a better university <laughs> than I do. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think we'll just probably dig right into one of our main discussions. Bear in mind, everybody, that there's definitely gonna be spoilers in some of the films we talk about. It's just gonna be kind of just, hit, we're just gonna mention titles sometimes, so there'll be, there'll be so many that we talk about. And I think the first topic that we want to get into is is the horror genre. Like, is it just the most recycled genre out of all of them? I have some notes with me, basically. Um, uh, is it the most recycled genre in terms of plot and story and character? I would argue that it's very recycled. Um, there's a lot of cliches associated with uh, horror, especially like even the subgenres, like um, slasher genres and whatnot. But I feel like the greatest cliche of uh, of the horror genre is the f is the one of the final girls you know the the final girl in the slasher film I feel like every single e not even slasher film but even like horror film where people get killed mm -hmm. uh, it's always girl at the end and every single film or nearly every film has that you should you it. should see what Psycho 3 does I know it's a spoiler for you directly because yeah. you haven't seen it yeah. but you know that you know that idea in horror films where you always have a woman getting punished for like exploring her sexuality in yeah. any way. Well, mm -hmm. this has a nun coming in and who ends up uh, meeting Norman and yeah. and uh, basically she, she ends up wanting to have sex with him after she 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 was out of the nunnery mm -hmm. for good um for for reasons I'll not I'll not say but um she has such, starts having sexual desires and she wants to have sex with Norman obviously and then at the end of the film. That's such a, that, okay, that's one problem I have with that film is the really stupid way she dies. She actually like falls down the stairs, you know, like in, in Psycho 1. Like, oh, yeah. like, she falls down those stairs in that fucking fashion <laughs> and uh, impales the back. I thought it was just too much of a freak accent. Yeah. Um, but it's a fucking statue of Jesus that stabs her in the back of the neck and kills her. That That's like heavy-handed symbolism. Yeah, that's it. But um, yeah, like I know what you mean. There's always a woman at the end. Like that's what Scream kind yeah. of is all about. And yeah. then... <laughs> It's so funny if you scream and it's it's a postmodern film, but then you have yeah. a scary movie, which takes yeah. a bit of a scream, which is definitely <laughs> a bit of a horror genre. Now that that's whenever things go too far. Yeah. But yeah, definitely that's probably the most repetitive character trait you yeah. would have. Yeah, final girl. Uh, in terms of plot, even I feel like because horror films a lot of horror films are so simple in what they do. Mm -hmm. Like if you take Halloween, it's a guy yeah. who is stalking these girls, these group of teenagers. And just killing them. Mm -hmm. Because they're so simple, I feel like they can't help but be recycled, you know? It's a good idea. Why not use it again? Of course, it gets to the point where, you know, the mid 80s, you know, the late 80s, where you're just <laughs> every single film is, yeah. is, is a slasher where people are getting hunted down by a guy. And it's just, I feel like it, it does have that element of mm -hmm. recycled. -ness. I mean, if you go on YouTube, there's a massive playlist of lots of the Chroma films. Oh, yeah. Some that wouldn't even be made, some that didn't even make it to DVD. Um, I mean, they're they're real trash. Some of them you can't yeah. even watch them because mm. the quality the quality is so low. <laughs> the, 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 not even just production levels, just in general, the mm -hmm. stories are stupid. I mean, God, yeah. some of the ones I came across were really bad. Like people I mean, taking people having a picnic in a graveyard and then flipping. Um, <laughs> what do you, what do you call that film that has the. You know, like that Bioshock, the, the old fashioned. Oh, the diving suits? The old fashioned diving yeah. suits, but there's fucking guys that come in there. <laughs> and it's called Space Zombie Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, go that, if you go through that list, you're just gonna see some of those ridiculous things. Yeah. I feel like I feel like Troma was like the original sort of Sharknado type thing. Where <laughs> I knew you were just, gonna say it. I knew you were gonna say where it. Where they just didn't take themselves seriously, you know? Some of those are my. Maybe not trauma in particular, but some of those sort of don't take yourself seriously. It's just 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 a bit of fun. Are some of my favorite horror films? You know. Uh, yeah, I like I like some of those eighties ones. Too. Yeah. The, 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 there's good ones from trauma now. There's there's Thugs of Avenger, Avenger yeah. which is hilarious, because <laughs> um, it, it's still like the classic nerd gets nerd yeah. turns superhero sort yeah. of thing. And 
and it's got like a Frankenstein kind of narrative because he wants to be accepted in the um, and then what's another uh, Night Beast is a very good one I thought I thought Night Beast was pretty good I remember watching that one but some of them on there are just like in fact whenever I, I consider having like seeing what the worst films of all time are I would actually put them in a separate pie just because <laughs> just because they're they're something they're their own the breed worst. yeah they're yeah. really their own breed <laughs> they really are gosh um, yeah in terms of like repeating themselves. I mean, I know at this point it's hard to have an original story, but yeah. it really does feel like a film's just getting repackaged constantly and constantly. Not, I mean, Hollywood's obsessed with remaking films, which I'll get to in a minute, but... It's uh, like a different yeah. thing. It feels lazy, I guess, yeah. the point. Like, people argue that remakes are lazy and everything, but at least for remakes, there's like... They're trying to play off the original, like sort of the success of the original or whatever, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later, but I feel that for... Recycled plots and recycled narratives, it, it does just cross the laziness barrier where you're like, yeah. is it, is it justifiably yeah. sort of being re recycled? Which mm -hmm. often it's not. I, I think I, I I mean I'm not opposed to remakes a lot of the time, but <laughs> Psycho remake, I mean I haven't seen I have like, I'm getting I, I covered it in the oh. marathon, but I mean that, what's the point of redoing it? I mean. Fuck, I'm not reading a good review, and it was like, is this a drawing of the Mona Lisa? It's not a real piece of artwork if you've yeah. just something someone else has done. Yeah. Is, is that it's not a, a literal word-for-word -word remake with Vince Vaughn? Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. Yeah. And apparently, I've never watched the Recycle, the Psycho remake uh, for reasons, um, but apparently it's insinuated, sort of implied, that whenever he watches um, through, do you know the part where he watches through like the hole yeah. at uh, your woman getting changed? Yeah. Um, it apparently it's insinuated that he masturbates it's like, mm, mm, thank you, thank you for that. But oh God, I'll be digging into that in the marathon anyway. <laughs> Either upload it before or after this video. What if I decide? Who's the director of that film? It's someone quite. It's Gus Van Sant. Yeah, Gus Van Sant. It's Gus. He's obsessed. He's obsessed with like sexual. Like, remember Elephant? Yeah. They tried to force the sort of the, that they were in a gay relationship Which, beforehand. Well, pff, my private Idaho. Okay, well we're getting off topic. <laughs> 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 that, that's pure film. This, that's what happens. Uh, we we'll just go off in tangents. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to mention milk as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, I know it's an older film, but we're gonna mainly focus on newer films. But the Fly remake, I do feel, is better than the B horror film. Oh yeah. Um, but it's still a great movie. But I, f I felt like David Cronenberg took that material and turned it into his own. He took yeah. it somewhere else. Yeah, he took it to a new. He level. didn't just. He was. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, I really like that movie. I'm gonna like <laughs> try and bring it back to the screen. Yeah. The Departed, I know it's not a horror film, um, it's meant, from, it meant to be an Infernal Affairs. I think it's better than Infernal Affairs, personally, um, that everyone will agree, but let's, let's, let's come back to horror before I end up <laughs> making this something completely different. I feel like pretty much that's, that's it, like, I mean, to yeah. that in the body, just, everything just gets recycled now. Yeah. And not even just for horror, I mean, this is a horror discussion, but like in terms of like just general filmmaking, it's pretty rare that you'll find a, a, an original idea. I mean, one of the most, I, you've seen It Follows, haven't you? Yep. That, that was a really original um, thing in, in recent times. I was like, yeah. We'll definitely get into that yeah. one later. Um, um, I was like, yeah, that's, that's really good. Because mm -hmm. originally I brushed it off. as was like, oh, that sounds really stupid. I mean, I originally made my friends went to see it because it just sounded really bad. Uh -huh. And then we went to see it just in the QFT and we were like, that was actually incredible. That was really, really good. It's one of the most popular at the moment. You know, it's one of the most praised yeah. um we'll definitely get into some of the ones that actually are yeah. good this isn't just us shitting on everything <laughs> that's coming out at the moment you know we still there's that still uh, that tiny bit of hope for the genre yeah. out there we think one thing uh on the topic of remakes uh, i think there's a few remakes we can talk about we know nightmare on elm street a long franchise ends up getting uh, one of yeah. my favorite franchises yeah i think i mean i love one and one two and three to be honest oh two i adore two it's my favorite um two is very sexual yeah well two is, yeah has very like homophobic not homophobic homo homoerotic subtext which yeah. uh, i'm sure if my friends are watching this they'll they'll laugh at because uh there's certain strands of my personality okay let's look at the uh i want to talk about the house of wax remake and the evil dead remake now the, the, i love when you think of house of wax you think of that 1950s Film with Vincent Price, a classic. Still, it's kind of camp, but it's fucking great. It's a great film. And then House of Wax, a remake, 2005, <laughs> with Paris Hilton. Oh, God, it's so bad. It's so boring. <laughs> and the characters in it are, we're talking about recycled yeah. characters. It's literally just pure stereotypes. Yeah, it's so uninteresting to watch. Yeah. I actually, I just get 
I just gave two fucks about <laughs> everyone in that film. The Evil Dead remake, I went to see in the cinema in 2013, I think it was, or 2012. Mm. And, you know, we, we, we're thinking of it. Um, Sam Raimi is the executive producer. Um, of A remake of the original Sam Raimi film, The Evil Dead, that came out in the 80s, which turned into two other films. But Sam Raimi said that he became executive producer on that film just to make sure that they, they, they heard they were going to remake it. So he wanted to get involved just to lessen the damage, I, oh, I guess. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to see it without him then, because it, it's an all. I, I know there's some people out there that like the film, but we're gonna get into this topic as well. It was just violence for its own sake, yeah. and it, it just had the most generic characters, a bit like House of Wax. Yeah, that's, it, that was my problem with mm-hmm. Evil Dead remake. I mean, uh, most people really, really enjoy it. Was it just but too much for me. Yeah, it was especially that opening scene with uh, whenever the the one with the girls getting burnt, and she's like, uh, yeah. "What did she say?" Oh, I can't remember something like, um, "It's like." Fuck me, daddy, or something like that. <laughs> so, like, mm, what? I what remember seeing it in the cinema, and I, I was why I was eighteen. That I was eighteen at that time. It was one of the first probably eighteen rated films I seen, mm-hmm. and I was just sitting there looking at the violence, like, what is why? This? this? I mean, it does make you quite uncomfortable at times. There's that. There's that one shot where um, a knife is, comes through the the wall and it hits her leg, and then it comes out oh, really yeah. slow. That. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was one good shot in the film, but overall I thought it was just fans for some sake, which we can, we can then, I guess that's our next topic. Yeah, I think let's just go, well, I think our next topic will be, have we become desensitized? Because it's fascinating to think how far we came since the 50s and 60s horror films, even the 30s horror yeah. films, because a uh, famous story of a psycho is that whenever, I've heard so many stories about the making of Psycho, but apparently it was very taboo to show a fucking toilet, toilet flushing. flushing yeah. You know, you've heard that classic story. The <laughs> thing, now, if that's something that makes people uncomfortable, <laughs> it's sort of America in the 50s. Oh, goodness me. Can you me. imagine what they would do if they saw the human centipede or something? I love the, I love, I love the story that um, Hitchcock, this is sort of unrelated, but uh, I love the story that Hitchcock wouldn't let people into the film if it had already oh, started. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like you couldn't spoil it for people who were coming in. Whereas like, yeah. people, people now have to tweet about it. Yeah, it's like, it's as like, they're watching it. That point. Cough, tweet along, ET, watch. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> you don't. So you don't, you don't curry it. <laughs> I know, that's what that was, pure encouragement. There were two people there whenever I arrived and they were just on their phone. Mm, what are you doing? Absolute cringe. <laughs> it really was. Um, so yeah, have we become like? Because we look at violence now in this and on the screen as nothing anymore. The standard yeah. have, have, are so different now to what used to be acceptable. I mean, yeah. if someone went to make a human centipede in the sixties, it would have been banned. It, yeah, it, it would have been. I mean, even the video nasties. A lot of those don't look anything near realistic, yeah. and they were all banned. So it's it's bizarre to think that back then, like how far we've, like you said, how far we've come in the past mm-hmm. 40, 50 years. It's, it's, it's fascinating because it, it, it says something about our entire culture and the way yeah. we consume things. The fact that um, even even like pornographic, like there's a lot of porn as well yeah. in horror films that, that there, there's yeah. a lot, there's so a lot of, horror films. yeah, there's a lot of explicit nudity in horror films yeah. and like in the fifties and the sixties, you weren't even allowed to have two people on the same bed. Yeah, I know. Also, there was a whole, there was a film called yeah. Pillow Talk, I think, and mm-hmm. it was it was the way they got around it was the shot in two different beds. <laughs> and um, the splice. What was it? What wasn't? I can't remember what year it was. It might have been from quite a long time ago, from like the thirties or twenty. But um, it was like a fil- like a, a, a kiss, an on screen kiss couldn't last more than like half a reel of film, or like two reels of film, or something oh. like that. It was like it was. Not too real, too. Something. Well, well, it's interesting the thing about the kissing. You know, you've seen cinema party, so yeah, you know, censorship in Italy. I mean, that was probably it's probably still like that in China, for all I know. Probably know? is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no uh, offense to our Chinese viewers. I know, I know. So if you're if you're uh, going through your proxy right now, I don't oh. watch this. <laughs> De Bucci, yeah. uh, as the Chinese would say. It's okay, there's probably some uh, Hong Kong viewers who you can access things. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I think one one of the main people who really pushed. One of the main innovators of that so-called torture porn thing was Eli Roth and oh, yeah. uh, with his Saw films, with his Hostel films. And I've seen the first Saw, I've seen the first Hostel, and I don't enjoy either of them. Um, I just can't. You don't, oh, you don't, you're not a fan of the original Saw? No, well, let's not. Get, well, let's get into that. Um, 
because now that we're talking about the super violence in films, I think one... Well, let's talk about The Human Centipede first, because I think everyone knows of that film now. Yeah. It's notorious in the film world. I haven't even seen the third one myself yet, but the second one's unforgivable. But in terms of the first one, I thought I thought the villain was so well played that it, it, he played with such conviction. He was a terrifying guy, but I felt like the stupidity of those two girls they even get into that <laughs> they, to, to wander off into the forest I thought mm. that was totally unbelievable and then I felt like it dragged on way too long and it was just violence for its own sake trying to be more meaningful than it actually is yeah. not an awful film but you know yeah. I have problems with I, it I feel I feel like that's a thing within torture porn uh, horror it's like they try to mask it as this um, artistic message, like if you take, yeah. if you take what, Pseudo, a Serbian Pseudo film, yeah, a, a Serbian film, it's. I've heard people like the fan design. Oh no, it has a really staunch political message. Yeah. And I'm like, shut up! Like it's, it's like look, look, look what, look what you're watching. It's, <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> that, that's it's um. And, like I'll, I'll define. I'll, like I'm sure you're the same. I'll defend right, uh, art's right to exist, but yeah. it's just I'm not comfortable with that. So it goes a little too far. Yeah, yeah. I like think. fair enough, people want to watch it, but I just I can't. Same for, I mean, this this film probably has more credibility, but I see a little 120 Days of Sodom. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I don't appreciate that film at all. I know it's meant to be a big metaphor for a type of yeah, fascism yeah. and all that, but I... Mussolini? Uh, I can't watch it. <laughs> it's I, I just don't agree that it's meant to be this super artistic film. But yeah. and I, uh, people will attack me for that, you know? Film yeah. snobs are going to bash me for that one. Um, it, it is worth noting that I actually do like Pasolini's work. Oh. I'm sure he's the same, but uh, I actually, I don't think I've actually seen another Pasolini film. So, God, that's a weird introduction. That's a that's, <laughs> that's probably the most notorious I have, film. I have one here. I have Pierre mm. Paolo Pas- oh, Pierre Paolo Pasolini. <laughs> the three P's. Yeah, three P's. P P P. Now, so okay, it's interesting that you don't because I hate the series, but I thought the first Saw film was good. I liked it. Liked, I liked its message. It, 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 had, it had like a sort of moral message, if you could. That's you exactly what I have. The, I have my notes. Yeah. Uh, morality. That's yeah. that's what I put in my notes. There, just the one word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, in terms of the series, I've only seen. I think I've seen Saw Four. I watched up the four. You watched. I stopped some, after that. Oh. I, Saw Four is very bad. Like very yeah, bad. It's. Really, yeah, I, it's I barely finished it, like, <laughs> um, but like the first Saw film, uh, it does have some moments of like super violence during like James Wan. I think he did The Conjuring as well. Yeah, he did. And the the good thing about Saw is it does have those those messages. It doesn't go too overboard with its violence. It is questioning like absolute morality. You know, good. It's real good and evil. It's got that raw emotion, yeah. and it's all shot in the same room. That was a short film that he done in two thousand and three, and then it got made and made into a feature after that. But see, after that, I felt like Saw 2 and 3 tried way too hard yeah. to be clever. I mean, I would imagine that. Saw 2, I thought, like, Saw 2, I, uh, to me, when I was watching, I was like, yeah, I can see it's, it's trying to be this super complex thing, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's a great film. Saw 3 did exactly that again. Saw, Saw 3 was exactly like Saw 2. Really? And Saw 3 was shit. And Saw 4, <laughs> was, but it did worse than me. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Saw 4 was just, uh, it, oh. it, as the series goes on, it keeps trying to top its level of violence. And... That's going to go into our next topic about um, how franchises just bring you back in. Yeah. Well, before before we move on, um, I don't know when anyone watching this uh, would have seen Cannibal Holocaust. I know Thomas has been trying no, to get himself watch it. Did, we were meant to do a discussion on that instead. I might do a video on it, but I just keep putting off watching it because I feel like I don't even want to put myself through it. I guess I keep hearing stuff about how terrible it is, but I've seen people defend that movie too. Yeah. It's, it's on. You know? You know? I can sort of understand how, how that has artistic merit because it was like the original. Like a lot of people say Blair Witch Project, original found footage. That's the original found footage. Yeah, but show. it's the original found footage film. So I guess, I guess it has sort of that artistic merit, but in ter- like I didn't mind most of most of the film. I mean, a lot of it is bad. Like there's no like scene I go, oh, well, that's pleasant. But the the, the, the the scenes that really annoyed me were the animal cruelty scenes. Were, oh, that's too far from Yeah, me. and the oh. fact that, like, I would, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even, like, I in, the, my, in my mind, I didn't have the privilege of being able to say that's a fake turtle or that's a fake, you know, rat or whatever. Because we, they were real. We know it was yeah. real. And um, I think, I don't care what kind of statement you're trying to make, but when you're causing physical harm to any animal or any human being, I yeah. think that's when you have to draw the line. Because, yeah. no matter, like, as storytellers and filmmakers, that is actually, like, an extreme ethical grind. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
there's people who make documentaries and sometimes people die. Some yeah. some journalists die sometimes, you know, because they go too far. Yeah. Things like that happen all the time. I'm not going to give examples and I should back that up right now, but if you go online, you know, you'll find that information out, uh, screwed away. But I think there's a, there's a certain responsibility as an artist and a filmmaker yeah. or a storyteller, anything. You should not go to that extent to cause physical harm to things. Yeah. Now, you can look at a film like Apocalypse Now where you do see the beheading of a fucking animal, but that's a tribe. They didn't, they, they just filmed stuff. That was unfolding naturally. Yeah. They were going to do that. Yeah. You can't go over to a tribe and go, and go oh, sorry. stop sacrificing <laughs> your animal. I mean, yeah. Um, so that's diff- that's different, but in the likes of Cal Alvis, I think that's when you draw the line. Yeah. I think that's just sick. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself like a massive animal rights activist or whatever. I'm like not, that. I'm definitely yeah, not. I'm, yeah, I'm the same as you, but like, the thing that annoyed me about just sort of uh, more because it was humans, is that, um, you know, with animals, they can't give their consent. Um, and at least with, the, with humans, they can say, oh yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, get a bit, I'll get a bit hurt. But an animal, you just go up to it and then it just feels like you're crossing some sort of moral line, which uh, yeah, I don't really mean. like. Even if the actors got really nuts and were like, oh yeah, yeah, let's actually like um, cut my finger off or something. Yeah. Uh, an animal can't do that. Yeah. And I, I just, I hate the fact that it, with anybody, it's the fact that you're taking something that obviously can't defend itself against yeah. you. It's sick. It makes me sick. Yeah. That stomach. I mean, even um, even the way they show it, like it's not it's not like a like a throwaway scene or anything, but like mm-hmm. it shows you everything. You're like, oh, God. I had to look away for a few seconds. Um, and obviously, 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 he's trying to fucking make a statement about yeah. who's the real cannibals, who's the real who's the real uncivilized people. It's like mm, you've gone a bit too far. I mean, even like. The director Diodato, I think his name Dio something. Mm-hmm. He um he was taken to he was taken to trial. It's like a That's funny right. He was taken to trial because he thought um because he it was thought that the people actually had, had died. Yeah, they thought they actually killed someone. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. But I wonder how they even distributed that film. I know. Like, who would who would agree to? I, distribute that? I, I like Warner Bros. logo or something. <laughs> <laughs> <into that. laughs> um, um. Uh, we're talking about we're talking about violence. We're gonna get what was the next point we're gonna go into? Yes, let's go into franchising yes. and how pretty much. I mean, there's like fucking two thousand Saw films. There's two thousand <laughs> Final Destinations. There's two thousand. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it just gets it reaches the ridiculous. How many? Yeah. Um, I've got a I've got a list here of really? films that end up. Getting, I mean, there's a lot of current currently running franchises going. I think we'll look at them, some of that. We'll not go back and look at like Friday the Thirteenth or mm-hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street, but it, Nightmare on Elm Street reaches up to nine yeah. pretty much. Um, Friday the Thirteenth just keeps getting reboots and stuff like that. And yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, yeah. They also have eyes. Oh God, there's, <laughs> um, there's so many I can go off. Aren't they making a, a Halloween reboot as well, or remake, or something? There's like, like five sequel? Halloween movies too. Yeah, I think they're making a sequel this next year or something. So it's. it's I, you know, it was only last year I found out there was so many Psycho films. Yeah. I, I quite like, a few. Psycho Four. There's a Psycho Four. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, um, didn't uh, didn't John Carpenter sign something? To say that the sh- the ship, Michael Myers could never die, so they can just keep making oh, yeah. as many films as humanly possible, just keep churning them out. <laughs> Me and my friend, whenever we were really young, used well, th- whenever we were teenagers, we always used to have this joke that in just Hollywood, there's like this machine, and, like, <laughs> and they just churn out films, and that's what they do. That's what they do in the in the, in the case of franchises. It's, it's, it's insane. Fun. It's like throwing meat into the yeah. sausage blender. And <laughs> It's <laughs> coming out. Just look at all the same. That's funny. So you have some of those older older franchises. Like franchising kind of started in like late seventies. When you think about it, sequels were never really made before no. the six seventies. Mm-hmm. There's very few sequels. Um, I mean, I know you go back to the thirties and the like Frankenstein. It was kind of like the original, the original. Um, horror Franchise. franchising. Um, but it was really the eighties. I think when things started to kick off, you started seeing more pop up. Yeah. Where there was like seven of a film that started getting me in. It's because, and it goes back to that whole idea of, of very, very simple plots. You just you can make them about everything, you yeah. know. Um, I know what you said we weren't going to delve into the Friday the 13th, but like you can just create so many Friday the 13th films because of just how simple that character and plot is, you know. It's, yeah, I know what you mean, because then you can generate more meaning around just that simplicity. Yeah. Like, and Halloween's a great movie, I think it's just pure fear. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. Um, but... Yeah, and then it comes down to the, the still relevant message of the sort of the still relevant question of if it's making us money, why stop? You know? How right? I mean t- it's obviously something's working, it doesn't yeah. like, it doesn't matter even whenever people come out and say, Oh shit, you, you went in to see yeah. it and <laughs> you pay to see it. And um we'll sort of look at the use of some gratifications that people have now for horror films every mm-hmm. time. So 
we talked about sort of like Elm Street and all that sort of thing, but some of the, the current running ones you've got Insidious, The Conjuring is probably going to turn into a franchise very soon. Yeah, Sinister. Sinister, Sinister. The Woman in Black has a sequel. Yeah. It, it, I, it might have a third one coming, I don't know. Then there's the soft franchise, there's too many of those, and it's on forever. Yeah. But it says something about how they use that name to get you in because yeah. people who saw Saw 3 were, you know, I think I think Saw Six or something was like the most successful of all the Saw films. It was it's the last one, or it? the last one. There's yeah. like, I think there's Saw Six and then there's Saw Three D, which is the seventh film. Oh yes, yeah, or something like, like that. Uh, which is always you know that's going to be gimmicky as hell. Yeah, I'm going to see that one. <laughs> Anything Three D, Nurse Three D. But you know because people are like, oh yeah, the oh, Saw, all oh, that film I can't watch that. Oh, it's terrifying. People, that's the thing with the horror genre. It's the reason people get in to see them. Yeah. They want to be scared. They want to yeah. be shocked. They want to go in and see something and be disgusted. There's people have a fascination with being disgusted. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, I, what did I go to see? I went to see it's, it was the third Insidious film, and uh, no, it wasn't. It was the Gallows, that atrocity, um, cinematic atrocity. But there were there were people. It was very. It was like an empty theater, and uh, it was me and a couple of other people. And then there were this row of teenagers up front, and just every single jump scare. Ah! Oh, ah! Ah! It's like. Not that scary. It's just, just, just gets me annoyed. It gets, gets me annoyed. I mean, that's a whole separate topic. The use of jump scares, but <laughs> yeah, well, that's gonna be covered anyway. Um, I'm sure because that's kind of like that's what the forest did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, back on the franchises. But people, I guess, keep coming in for the same. I mean, one that's really annoyed me is Paranormal Activity, because I think there's like, what is it five of them now. Yep. Five, five. I've seen, I see, I seen the third one in the cinema. As when I went to see that one, I realized, oh yeah, this is the reason people keep coming back to see yeah. it because they kind of enjoy going in. They're really, like, you hear people, uh, you know, shrieking and then laughing right after it. Yeah, you know? it's it is it's sort of that thrill. It's it's what they're going for a bit of a thrill. Yeah, I thought Paranormal Activity three was you know a meh film. It was okay. You know. It, yeah. It's sort of perfect. I'll not see it again. You know they're not yeah. rewatchable in the slightest. That's the one with the Xbox. It's like the Connect, and they're like, you can see the. You I can think see that's the fourth ghosts. one. Oh. I don't know. I think I can't remember what I, really uh, happens in the I, third I, one. I've seen all of them. But just... the fine footage genre, like I know we could, that a lot of them are horror films. The fine yeah. footage genre. But, so all I can say about it is it's an idea that's fantastic and then died extremely quickly. Yeah, I mean, like we said. Have a Holocaust original uh, fine footage film, and like in terms of that, very very good. How very come there wasn't any made like after that? You know, yeah, between the eighties and yeah. Blair Witch. Uh, that's because of the rise of the slasher, I guess. Um, mm. But um, and then Blair Witch, and then I think Blair Witch sort of created that kickoff, and then it died for a bit, Aye. and then now it's come back. Yeah, uh, Blumhouse, Blumhouse are the the studio behind par- the whole paranormal oh, activity thing. Okay. So I think they're and the gallows. And uh, so the yeah, gallows is bad, like. the gallows is atrocious. Um, <laughs> generally, although it did have a really cool setting inside that high school, I'll say that about it. Um, but so I think Blumhouse are slowly trying to claw it back. I think paranormal activity died. made it come back in again. Two thousand six yeah. or yeah. seven. It did. Did it died for for a bit of the two thousands and then mid two thousand. But I, I kind of like the first one. The second one not yeah. so much because it it was just playing on your. Um, Generic. I mean, it's playing on your actual senses because even if right now I was just sitting here talking and then uh, all of a sudden I decided to cut um, to me dressed in a clown costume and screaming and put up the audio levels, yeah. that's going to scare the shit out of you. Yeah. You know, it's just because that's how your your body is going to. Re- hearing sudden sound is going to make your body react, and I yeah. think it's cheap thrills a lot. Definitely is. Part it's, of it's, it, 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 the good thing about the first one is it had that sense. I actually very much like the first one. It had that sense of dread. That was sort of like. What's going on? Why um, that the others weren't able really to recapture? Yeah, I like the first one too. Yeah, um, there was always that scene in the first one, the part in the first one that they put like the flower down, and then so you could see the demon's footsteps and like. Oh yes. But there was no. That was a really that was a really effective scare because there was no like ah ah. You know, it was there was no jump scare or anything. Yeah. Um, it was really good, but what was I going to say? Recently, it's just. They shouldn't be called jump scares. They should be called jump shocks because your body's just shocked. You're not scared. Yeah. You forget about it five minutes after leaving. Like definitely. It's, it's, it's annoying. Definitely. It's definitely annoying. 
it's not like a film like The Exorcist that gets boycotted yeah. or people are throwing up and yeah, people like people aren't gonna throw up over a jump scare. I mean, I heard a story. Someone, someone I I, I knew, um, he had saw it in a come out in like the eighties or something, mm-hmm. early late seventies, and he said, um, and he watched it when he was like eighteen, mm-hmm. and he said like literally him and his, it haunted him and his friends for like yeah. weeks. He couldn't sleep for weeks. My mum has a my mum has a funny story about uh, the Exorcist. Not funny, but like funny to me, but not funny to <laughs> her. My dad was out of the apartment. We were living in Canada. This point, they were living in Canada. This point, and uh, my brother, my my dad had gone to work, and my mum was left in the apartment with my with just my brother, my older brother. He was sleeping, and my mum decided to watch the Exorcist on VHS, or whatever, and. Um, I think we just make it scarier. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's that sort of rustic <laughs> antique sort of thing, uh, amateur. But um, the whenever she was watching it, but midway through, all the lights there was like a, there was like a power outage. All the lights went off. Oh, like okay. she was in like total darkness because my dad was working the night shift, and then she had to go across the hall and knock on her neighbor's door, who happened to be a policeman, and, and sort of it always made just made me laugh. But it's sort of interesting that even like if you were watching a, a horror film now, say you're watching The Gallows. Uh, the gallows. Um, you would never like if you were watching that and all the lights went out. You wouldn't be scared. You know, it doesn't have that psychological impact that The Exorcist would have had. You know, even though it's meant to be a psychological horror. So, just it's interesting that the impact of horror films has sort of lessened over over the years. Now we've talked about franchising and things that are going on recently. So I think we should actually look at some of the most recent examples. I'd say like. 2010 and beyond mm-hmm. sort of thing. I don't know if there's anything in particular. Let's look what's gone wrong and what why they simply don't work and why we're not just talking about critically badly received films that have not done so well at the box office and or aren't very well received just in a general sense. You yeah. know, um, what, what went think wrong? the first one that comes to my mind. I think it's just because it's quite recent. Is the forest? Mm. Yeah, that's a good one to start with. Actually, yeah. the forest. I was quite excited for. Not excited for. Like tentatively excited for. Because it it's it, I don't know whether you know the premise, but the premise is that this girl, this woman, um, goes to Japan to look for her sister, isn't it sister? Yeah, um, her she, twin yeah, sister. Twin sister, who's sort of gone missing in in the suicide forest. Um, and I thought, great horror film, Japan set in the suicide forest. That's like a really good combination. It's it's a fantastic concept. Yeah. It's a, the, the potential that you could have for yeah. that, and the setting. potential was ruined because. Its execution was atrocious. Like not atrocious, just very boring. Yeah, it's like it's just a really mediocre film. Yeah. And it's not. It falls into so many cliches. Ah, it's so jump scary. Yeah, it's gone from that being this. So it, it went from me having this really sort of high idea of it, of what of everything they could do within the suicide forest to just yeah. descending and descending. I was hoping it had this like really, like kind of tapping into Japan's culture a little bit. Yeah. Maybe you know, kind of why it's it's. And, and maybe make it this very chilling place for her to go and question her own sanity and question, um, you know, living to see if the, the whether the place is actually haunted, possessed yeah. or not. I thought that would have been great. Yeah. It could have really tapped into those old Japanese tales of that forest and yeah. it just it just took a shit on it. I mean, I feel like that's a film. Why hasn't Japan made that film yet? Yeah. I mean, there might be, like I'm saying that, but there might be a very you know a lesser known film that has been made, but no one would know. Yeah, you know, um, if there is, the point is in that direction. Yeah, because I, I want that. Saying. I want that movie. Yeah, <laughs> I know. There's the other film with Matthew McConaughey that came out called Same. The Sea of Trees. It's I, I don't know where it's going at the moment, but it came out last year. But I haven't seen it being released in the UK or anything like that yet. But apparently, it's no good either. Mm. Um, but in terms of the film being a generic, we're going back to what we started up with. You're yeah. you're totally right because where it went wrong was. It had a lot of jump scares and it had a lot of coincidences. Like, I feel like it was way too coincidental for her to be in a bar and then meet that yeah. guy. And oh yeah, well, I'm going up there anyway. Oh, <laughs> just come with me. It's like that's no way. The yeah. coincidence level for that is it's it just wasn't believable in the no. slightest. It wasn't. I mean, also characters had no depth. No. I mean, I don't. I, I, it's sort of okay. The girl, her twin sister's gone missing. Okay. That's sort of development, but it. I tried to. I tried to make the film, and at the in the opening, you know, yeah. it, was, it confused me for a minute. I was like, because I didn't know it was twins in the film at mm-hmm. first, and then, because um, it was coming between her and, and the other person. Yeah, and I was like, but oh, they look the same. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no, but sisters. there was just no development to any of the characters. Really, I mean, you you have your man who you know in the end sort of betrayed her. I hate the end. Of them. 
God, the MX is so awful. <laughs> I, re- I so, really don't. It just stops. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not an ending. Well, like the... The, the, the police coming at the ends. Yeah. It's, it's annoyed me. Not a fan of that ending. No. Um, talking about a horror set in... Recent horror set in Forests. Blair Witch came out. Don't know whether you've seen it. I have not come across Blair Witch, and I've heard like two opposite spectrums. I've heard um, William said it was it was actually quite good, not brilliant, but it was good. And then yeah. I heard someone say it was total trash. Yeah, um, I'm hearing a bit of mix. I sort of, yeah, I sort of fall in the middle of it. I call it a very meh film, like you. Yeah. That's your term, a meh film. Because yeah, a meh film is uh, like a one you give like a between a five and a six out of ten. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> For the for the vast majority of it, I was bored. I was like, yeah. I don't really care what's going on here. There was just nothing. It tried to recapture the spirit of the first film. It didn't didn't succeed. Uh-huh. Um, there was this there was a scene in it that made. But then there was that scene in like towards the end. It's not that long a film. It's like eighty minutes. There oh. was a scene towards like the fifty minute mark. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then the last ten minutes are quite good. Other than that, just nothing nothing good. I mean. It just falls into that trap that found footage has created for itself, and that it becomes really bland. Yeah, and it's uh, it's, it's unfortunate. So, <laughs> like, um, I just want to just to finish up on the forest. The reason it doesn't work is it, the jump scares are are, are silly, mm-hmm. and like literally, there's parts in it whenever something popped up on screen that I actually couldn't help myself from laugh because it was just so silly. I, I can't remember exactly what moments it was. I think maybe whenever she falls down the hole, oh, yeah. whenever things start popping up at her, I just <laughs> I oh I mean it's when she was looking at the thing I knew there was remember she was looking through the, the wee stereoscopic oh, yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what you call it I had yeah. one as a kid myself but like, I was like oh oh, she's going to look through this I know what's going to happen something's going to pop up yeah. and something surely pops yeah. up but what about that thing where it's her dad or something you remember and he's and just going and he's on the or am I thinking of a different movie <laughs> I think you're thinking of a different film is there, not a, like, is there not a bit where she's just thinking back to something that happened in her childhood God knows. I think what my brain I, what has. What film am I thinking of? That sounds like a lot of films. I think, I think <laughs> That's a very general yeah, term. Um, no, well, well, okay, well, anyway, about that thing, which is looking through yeah. the. Obviously, I'm waiting on something to pop up, and when it does, it didn't even fucking make me jolt. Yeah. yeah. It was just funny. Yeah. It's just annoying. It's just. Is the execution was that bad? I, I'm, I'm wondering what film I'm thinking about. It was something to do with. Um, Oh, wow, it was Nurse 3D. It was crazy. <laughs> and, yeah, more than that later. I don't know if you call it a horror film or not. That's the thing. That um, was, it was Nurse 3D. And it was shit. Really shit. My, uh, the thing is, whenever my friends talk about horror films, sort of people who are less film inclined, whenever mm-hmm. they talk about horror films, they talk about how scary a film was based on jump scares. It's, like, mm, oh, yeah. it's not really that scary, you know? It's not. I call something scary when it has like a lasting effect on you. I want to talk about Insidious then for jump scares because um, it's got quite a few. Insidious is an yeah. okay film. Yeah. I think that it got way too big for its boots in the second film. I, th- I felt like, I, I, I don't know, when I saw the cinema, I was like, thinking, oh, I felt like it was trying to be as complex as Inception, but be a horror film because it just went too far. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it didn't confuse me, but I felt like it was just trying really hard to be that really uh, convoluted narrative. And yeah. it, it was just too big for its boots. And, you know, I anytime I talk about Insidious, I can't stop but laughing because all I think of is Darth Maul. <laughs> oh yeah, bloody hell! <laughs> the, the Darth Maul thing, like it's just really fucking funny to look at him now. <laughs> it's kind of creepy whenever you see like the whole ending. I thought that sequence was pretty cool. Yeah. But like it just makes me laugh because yeah. of how much he looks like Darth Maul. I mean, what were they thinking? Are you, I mean, that's not a character that you can avoid seeing in pop culture. That's not. Mm-hmm. That's not. You, you can't make that mistake. Yeah. Especially when you're in the film business and you know who Darth Maul is, <laughs> and you just stuck him in the movie. It would have been intentional. It would have been like. Oh. There had to be something. Yeah. He literally looks like Darth Maul. It is. It's like almost identical. It's, it's strange. So the Conjuring, which I also saw in the cinema. Mm-hmm. I mean. I I haven't seen a good horror film in a good long time, but mm. we'll get into a few that have really surprised me. Um, in the cinema, the worst horror film I've seen is probably The Possession or Evil Dead. Oh, the remake, yeah. A remake, the um, remake of Evil Dead. You're talking about The Conjuring there. I actually quite enjoy The I actually really like The Conjuring, other than the ending, where it just turned into a generic possession film. I, I like The Conjuring as well. I felt like it, had, it, 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 rela- it, it had more atmosphere to it. You know, yeah. it, it definitely more atmospheric and had more suspense and tension as opposed to having jump scares but i remember that one jump scare where there was something on top of a cupboard <laughs> yeah it didn't, yeah it didn't work on me it um, didn't work on me i mean james wan is a good director he's talented and then there was the conjuring and then there was that doll annabelle 
And they were like, oh yeah, people love Annabelle. Let's make a let's make a spin-off film from Annabelle called Annabelle. And I don't know whether you've seen Annabelle, but Annabelle's atrocious. Like I, <laughs> genuinely, yeah, I, I was trying to that's, think. I was trying to think whether I could just call it something else. Or, no, yeah. but it, it's, well, honestly, we've it's, asked twice if used that word to yeah. describe a shit film. So it's uh, it was really really bad. It was um, it just it was cliche after cliche after cliche and. They focused actually so little on the doll, it was it shouldn't have been called that. Was it not another one with that Guillermo del Toro was the producer or something? Or Mama? Yeah. Oh, Mama, yeah. Or did he direct it? No, he was, uh, I think it was producer. Yeah, he didn't direct. Uh, I haven't seen that, but um, it seemed to be quite well received yeah. itself. The Devil Inside, I don't know if I know, have you seen The Devil Inside? It's Devil a possession Inside. film. Uh, did you ever see The Last Exorcism? Or The Last... last? No. Uh, last Exorcism and it was Last Exorcism Part 2, which always made me laugh. Cause the Last Exorcism was like, it was just, it got kind of silly towards mm. the end. The Devil Inside is so funny. Like, there's this scene where, like the poster is like this... Um, it's the nun. The nun. Yeah. I'd seen, see the scene in the film, it's so fucking <laughs> funny. You think that's going to be a main character or something, don't you? Or like a, a main villain or something? Yeah. But it's literally, she's driving somewhere and... She looks out of the car and you have a shot and you see this nun looking at her like <laughs> 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 You know, and it's really funny. <laughs> and that film is not scary at all. Like I I hate that movie. That oh. was I hate that film. Have you seen Devil? But no. the uh, but the elevator? Oh no, I have seen Devil. <laughs> yeah. that, that just got silly. Yeah. It just got really stupid towards the, the end. Spoiler, the old woman was the devil. <laughs> so spoiler there. Doesn't get you doesn't this. get you really wanted to see Devil for some reason. I mean, interesting idea. Let's all stick it in an elevator. I think it'll make yeah. a good like twenty minute film or yeah, something. Yeah, that could have been a really cool short film. But M. Night Shyamalan did the producing on that? Was he his producer? Oh, yeah, my blood. That explains everything. Yeah. Well, no, because I like M. Night Shyamalan oh. a lot. I love M. Night Shyamalan, genuinely do. He's honestly one of my favourite directors. We'll, we'll, we'll avoid that one for now. <laughs> <laughs> barring his last two, last, uh, barring uh, After Earth and Last Airbender. And some other ones that have come out recently, uh, Hush, I don't know if Hush can be considered a horror film though. I see it more as a thriller. Some films, yeah. don't, to me, I don't know whether to call it a th just a thriller or a horror film. Yeah. If Hush is a horror film, it's a pretty good one. Uh, just You have this deaf woman who ends up getting attacked by an invader. I just felt the only problem with that was Great, great setup of those characters, mm. but the characterization was awful. I guess because um, I, there was absolutely no no reason for that guy yeah, to show up and, exactly and do all that. Um, it just uh, it wasn't believable at all. One of the I mean, speaking of no reason for them to turn up, I mean, I've watched the first forty minutes of Hush, but uh, one that uh, one that actually pulled that off, sort of you know why are they doing this um, aspect of it off pretty well it was the strangers. And I know Thomas hasn't seen The Strangers, but no. the concept of The Strangers is that these people are on like a romantic retreat or whatever, and they uh, they they're on this um, they hire like a cottage or like a house for the night mm -hmm. to stay in, um, and then they get a knock on the door. It's this person like trying to sell them something. And the, the guy's like, "No, go away. We're not buying." Um, and then he comes back later on. She comes back later on. This the seller person comes back later on. Um, she's wearing a mask, mm -hmm. and. Um, she just, the guy asks the door and she just sort of stares. And then the guy's like, okay, go away. She walks away and sort of, he goes to the door. And then he comes back, she comes back later. And, but it, he, but he can't see her because they're off um, asleep in a while. But then it shows her on the camera and she breaks in along with other masked people. But mm -hmm. it's, it worked really well because there was no reason for them to do it. It was just sort of sadistic pleasure they got yeah. from it. And I thought that was really quite cool. Um, that, that, even that gives a bit of motive, you know, just the sheer stupidity of those characters. It kind of has yeah. something there. But yeah, yeah. Hush, you know, I think that was... I, I thought it was a pretty great film. I thought it was a great execution because it was good. The fact that she was deaf, it, there was lots of technical opportunity, you yeah. know, for the editing because, you know, you go in the most where you, you don't hear anything and then she has to rely on, you know, visual things. And that's why, you know, we're... I never even thought about that before, but like if you live when you're de when you're deaf, you're falling, you'd have to be a flash and alarm. Yeah. And that's you should have seen this thing in the film. It was like yeah, yeah, it was crazy. You definitely would um, notice that. Yeah. But I felt like uh, the motive, it was just silly. The, the villain guy, he just he was just silly. He was kind of threatening, and he wasn't. Mm -hmm. What annoyed me about um, Hush was that he took his mask off. That was annoyed, annoyed me. I thought yeah. that was terrific. I was like, oh, this is like, like, like a throwback to Mike Myers yeah. or something. Look and then, he, and then he takes it off. Like, I was like, well. And the scene where he takes it off is really stupid as well. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? What else? Okay. Ed follows. We love that. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's 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 uh let's yeah okay. I think we can talk about good ones now. Yeah. Have you seen the witch yet? I've seen the witch. Yeah. You've seen the witch now. The one that's one I really need to see again because I don't know how I feel about it yet. I know I liked it, but I feel like some of it was. I can't. I don't even know. It just. It was. Yeah, what do you think of it? I like the witch. Um. I think it was mis. I've heard a lot of people saying it was missold and mistargeted or whatever. It mis, mis, mis marketed. It was a fascinating film, like it. it yeah. was I find that really, that whole sort of setting really interesting. They're puritanical yeah. New England, sort of sixteen hundreds. So the language. Yes, yeah, then it's quite super Shakespearean. Because the, the language is actually hard for me to understand. Mm. I actually had to put, I, I think it did put subtitles on at one point because mm. the accent was so thick. Yeah. I couldn't really hear what they were saying. Um. But in terms of that, I thought it was really, really good psychological horror. Yeah. I thought, um, my, I walked out with my, uh, my mum went to see it with me and uh, she said, she went, there was too much talking in that. I went, um, probably the same concern you had. She probably couldn't understand a lot of it because we got to see it in the cinema. Um, because you couldn't really turn on the subtitles. But uh, in terms of the, just being a, a horror film, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it dealt with the whole aspect of good and evil and sort of the, the sort of the warped perspective that the Puritans had on good and evil and whatnot. Yeah, I think it, it, I, I thought the atmosphere, the setting mm-hmm. was really well done. And that the kid who, who plays the who, plays the devil child. Yeah, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. That was that was creepy yeah. as fuck. That's one of the most scary the children I've ever seen in a movie. Like, of the corn like that that's stuff. that rivals the omen and yeah. the shining by far. You know, as in as in the twins in the shining, yeah. I mean not, not that way. <laughs> um, but uh, no, but I thought I think I just didn't quite understand it fully. That's why I want to see it again. That's yeah. why I don't want to talk too much about it. Yeah. Um, Black Philip, beware of Black Philip. Yeah. But I thought it was very. I thought there were some messages in there about um, kind of like a coming age sort of thing, it's a coming of age sort of mm-hmm. thing too. Yeah. There's a bit of sexuality in it. I felt yeah, too. I, I mean, I don't know how much you know about the Puritan society, but. Um, uh, Back back then, they would have assumed that they called the devil the black man, and uh, sort of they had ways to like combat the black man and during your house and everything. So uh, it's interesting that they chose Black Philip. You know, that's oh. quite cool. Um, plus, they were so the Puritans were so repressive in their attitudes to sexuality. It was insane. Like they would um, they would make you like cover a lot of your body and whatnot, just as sort of. But like Amish people today. Yeah, exactly. It's um. It's really interesting. I find that find that time period very interesting. Instead of it was cool to see how they incorporated that into the film. Yeah, I've heard nothing, but you know, it it, it got language and stuff like mm-hmm. that, like spot on. So, yeah. and the ending was like, I didn't know whether it, this is really silly or this is like yeah. really disturbing. That's what I just need to see again. Yeah, I, it's one that I'd rewatch definitely. Uh, but the witch is one of the better ones that have come out recently. I think it's it 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 does everything that. The, the other horror films that are shit because yeah. it doesn't have jump scares at all no it doesn't and it's, it's one it's one of the creepiest films that have come out in recent Definitely. years it's a, it has like growing sense of dread yeah which is very very good yeah and it's, it's very it's very chilling very yeah. atmospheric chilling film in a way um, sort of we're going through a horror resurgence it can be argued because there's a lot of films that are coming out uh, obviously there's a lot of trash that's coming out as well but that's for everything but maybe Babadook. Babadook. Let's yeah. talk about the Babadook and It Follows. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's it finish up on It Follows since we mentioned it earlier. So yeah. it, it Follows, I think, is like we were talking about recycled plots and recycled things. A it had a really original thing, but it paid homage to what its infl- is it, well its influences and inspirations were. It sort of paid homage to uh, John Carpenter, uh, early eighties, late eighties John Carpenter, which I thought was really cool. Um, so it was, it played off its uh, inspirations, but not in the way that ripped it off, you know? Yeah, that yeah, it, cool. it took us somewhere else. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. And I think it follows, it's definitely one I want to see again because mm-hmm. I didn't quite understand everything, but I guess that whole setup mm-hmm. was just, it was very interesting. And then I thought I'm trying to find another sexual partner. <laughs> yeah, but, um, and it's funny that you were saying, and obviously a major trope within horror is that. You know, sexuality is punished. Yeah. This is, it felt sort of self-aware in that fact that, you know, that's what they were dealing with. They were, they, they were sort of, not making fun of it, but sort of referencing that sort of horror deal. Because I, I know someone um, who didn't like that just because of the, the way it was, it, it, she just said, um, you know, how much it was punishing women mm-hmm. in the film. And I, don't think I it felt was. like that wasn't the point yeah. of the film, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't just, that's not what the topic yeah. of the film is about. It's not, 
made the beer misogynistic yeah. kind of showing of it's, not, it's it's much more than that. It's way more. Than that. Yeah, I feel like it, it has a lot of layers, and I think one of the layers is a very touching, in a way, coming of age film about. Yeah, I've of, heard that. I've yeah, heard about that. that girl, about the guy who has that question, the girl, and then sort of what he'll do to. I don't want to spoil it because I actually do think you should go see it. If you yeah, want, I mean so. that's one. Um, there was a really great shot um, when the character is tied to a chair. Mm-hmm. And I think the camera just pulls away. Yeah. And I don't know why but that, sh- that that shot, the way it was done, is very disturbing. Mm-hmm. Or even some of the shots where there's something following behind somebody. And yeah. I just thought a lot of the cinematography was really well done in that film. Yeah. Um, in terms of creating that atmosphere and that suspense, and that's yeah. something that's um, uh, missing. Like. The forest is a well shot movie. It's it looks okay. Cinematography is quite interesting. Um, it's not a, it's not on a technical level. These films are feeling. It's yeah. come down to the story of plot. Tech. How, how come like well all that technology and everything? You just can't just try and make a fucking good movie. Yeah. Uh, like, in Hollywood, I mean, you all this great camera equipment. This is the potential that they have now, and yeah. technology's gotten better, and stories are getting worse. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean. Definitely, I mean, even sort of the rise of actors, you know, you have a lot of good actors nowadays. Yeah. You, have, you know, probably the most good actors you've, you've ever had because just you're able to reach more people. Yeah. So why can't you just make... I mean, I film? thought Natalie Dormer had done a good job in, in the first... Yeah, well, yeah, she, I mean, for what... Uh, it's, it was really a directorial problem. You could see some weaknesses in the performance, yeah. but overall I thought she'd done a good job. Mm-hmm. But there's only so much an actor can work yeah. with. You know, there's a lot of great actors terrible in script. terrible films because mm-hmm. they're terrible scripts. Mm-hmm. You know... Nick Cage, I will defend Nick Cage. <laughs> I I love Nick Cage. See, like I'm I'm someone that I I haven't really actually watched a, a Nick Cage films. film outside of like two or three of yeah. them. Yeah, I, I I grew up on Nick Cage. Films. I've seen the good, <laughs> I've seen adaptation like is a good one. Yeah, so. um, the Wicker Man. Not the bees. Not the, killing me will bring back your goddamn money, <laughs> you bitches. It's so funny. You're gonna laugh now because you're gonna go, you're gonna uh, go and look at my Wicker Man review. I say not the original. <laughs> not the original. No, I. So I they're gonna review the Wicker Man, not that one. <laughs> no, I, 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 I love, I, I love uh, the kids a lot. Um, not the bees. Not the <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I haven't even seen it, but I've seen that. Scene. Have you not seen I it? Oh it. no, get to watch it. I heard it's extremely dread. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, what's in the bag? A shark or something? <laughs> How to get burned? How to get burned? I've seen like fifteen minutes worth of clips from the yeah, film. It's insane. Uh, all over, like pretty much a fifteen minute video summing it all yeah. up. And I think a... I think I've seen it now. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I don't want to sit and put myself through that. Oh, Nick Cage. There's a part in it where Nick Cage puts on a bear suit and starts rampaging through the town's festival, just <laughs> punching the women. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's just that sounds stupid. It's insane, but I do. I, I do like Nick Cage. Um, it was a little tangent, but we did, but we did keep on topic with, with the horror film there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the Babadook is one I want to talk about because I know some people don't like that film, but to me, the Babadook is probably the best horror film we've had since, to me, since Sweeney Todd, which was in two thousand and seven. Mm. If you're going to consider Sweeney Todd as a horror film, I would say that it's one. The Babadook is probably the best I've seen mm. since then. What I loved about the Mamadouk was it took what horrors was to be, which is sort of the idea that we're playing off our fears and playing off yeah. sort of human weakness in a way, and sort of applied it in a way that was a family drama but also a horror film, you know, because yeah. it sort of dealt with the ideas of grief. And I've heard people say drug addiction as well. I, um, I've heard, yeah, I've heard that as well. So I've probably read the same review. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's cool that those human weaknesses and those human frailties are being exploited by the direct, or by, by the plot and one of them, by the characters as well. So it's... I thought that was really refreshing. What what it done well, what's missing, um, is strong characters because seeing the first half now of that film, you care yeah. so much about those two. Yeah. Like you're you're emotionally invested. You, I mean, it's not exactly the most. Um, I mean, it's probably a, it's it still has those cliches of oh yeah the father's not present so there's gonna yeah. be that kind of narrative but you know I, I felt like it dealt with it in a very very good way. Yeah. You really you really get to know those characters and her dilemma. You know, you can see in her eyes, you know, the frustration and and the exhaustion, her actual yeah. exhaustion. Of, yeah. of, I mean, and then we get up to that scene when her, when the child uh, falls and everything. You know, mm-hmm. just that amount of stress that's going on inside her. And you know, the film could also be seen as like an almost like a nightmare of parenthood, mm-hmm. about like a racer head in like, in an extreme <laughs> way. Up to the build up, whenever the child falls and everything, uh, I feel like you get so much invested. It adds so much more to the rest of the film simply because you care about the characters. And you're interested in how it ends. It doesn't really have jump scares. It's pure atmosphere. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. And you don't see that monster, monster no. until like, well, I know. Not, you don't really see it to be mm-hmm. honest. 
um, it's so effective. It's, it reminded me a lot of Nosferatu. Oh, because yeah, the use of shadows. The use of shadows, yeah, exactly. And sort of the use of suggestion as well, which I thought was incredible. Yes. I, I, I do feel like that's something that... I think there's a lack of imagination in a lot mm -hmm. of these horror films that are just Definitely absolutely is. dreadful because they're, they, they just want to put in all the violence and the gore and it, it over it just overdoes it. It, yeah. it. it overwhelms the senses, basically. It's, yeah, whenever, whenever something is left to your imagination, it's always worse than when it's on screen, you know? Yeah, I mean, it just it just it leaves you unsettled because you're yeah. not sure because it could be a mul multiple things. Yeah. It could be anything. And that's why you'll see my review of Cat People in this marathon, you know, an old 40s horror film that I... That just a little B-movie and it... it, it it didn't um, show certain things just because of the budget issue, mm -hmm. um, but it worked at its advantage because it creates a lot more atmosphere just because yeah. you don't see the uh, the, the beasts in, in, in question. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing. You don't need, like you said, you know, why if um, why if there's a huge upsurge in sort of the quality of technology and all that, why is there less talent? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like it's, it's not... Those two things aren't sort of related, you know. I feel like because even if you take Halloween, that was shot on a minuscule budget, yeah. And and look what it created. Same with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, it was shot. I mean, there was rumors for what it was shot on, but it was it was shot on less than hundred thousand anyway. And it's just insane what mm. what what a filmmaker can do, can do on that thing. So yeah, I feel like those two things aren't related. I, th I don't think um, you need a, a a great amount of technology or a massive budget to make a good a good film. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I mean, there's a lot of great things to be done on small budgets. Yeah. And speaking of small budgets, let's take a look at what is you know our modern day level of trauma films. This new, th but this is like a new form of entertainment, a new mm. use for films. So bad they're good. You know, I hate that phrase and love it at the same time. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, mate, I want to go, oh, let's watch this film. It's so, so bad. bad, but oh, it'll be a good laugh. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I do it myself, you know, The Room. Yeah. It's an awful oh. film. That is the best film to, have, to do a drinking game to. <laughs> um, I did not hate her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, hi, Dougie. <laughs> yeah. The endlessly quotable film. Um, but in terms of horror, there's so goddamn many. I actually had to make a list because... <laughs> right, I mean, let's just talk about fucking bad shark movies. As That's, a, that could be like a genre of itself. That as a, a sub-genre of its own. I mean, I mean, Cinemassacre did a flipping top 40 shitty shark movies. <laughs> you should see the way it starts. He's just got to... He, he, he bought them all. Yeah. For, he, <laughs> but, you know, God, I wouldn't have sat through that many. I couldn't have. 40? Bloody hell. I bet they're all the same as well. And there's just so much. There's some that I've watched, and I'm literally like, you know... This is extremely unrewarding in every sense. Mm -hmm. Sharknado 1 was just boring, bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so stupid. I love how there's a character who uh, has a shotgun and has to be saved by a man with a fucking deck chair. <laughs> you know, like she has a shotgun that gets knocked out of her hands. And then, oh, how does that guy kill a shark? He gets it with a deck chair. And you couldn't do it with a shotgun. <laughs> Um, but you know, there's so many of the shark. Ghost Shark is awful. Oh god, Ghost oh. Shark is so. You say Ghost Shark? I've not, but it's on Netflix. And it keeps tempting me. <laughs> there's a scene. Uh, there's a scene uh, towards <laughs> the end. The Ghost Shark basically appears in water anywhere. But dude, it appears in like a water slide, <laughs> and, uh, like, and someone's going down the water slide, and then all of a sudden the Ghost Shark appears. Dude, a Ghost Shark comes out of a fire hydrant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's just hit me how obscenely <laughs> bizarre that. Genre is that, that's some genre. Me mega shark versus mega mega oh, shark. Me yeah. Mega shark versus crocosaurus. Mega shark versus megalodon oh. as well. Shit. I mean, why is it flying sharks? <laughs> and I love a mega shark. That the, 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 the actually like the, they want mega shark to be mega shark, and then mega shark turns on the world or something. I don't even know. It, it just turns into total nonsense. But, but like that's like this is like a new thing that's happened. So bad, it's good. Birdemic, oh. companies versus zombies, ginger dead man, evil bong, ginger dead oh man God. versus evil bong. Those are like, <laughs> ginger dead man versus evil bong is maybe the worst I've seen in that kind of subgenre. Because <laughs> I was watching it and I was like, this is the most unrewarding experience in my life. I got zero laughs. But there, there's one really funny bit in it where he's like, you mean you'll make me a man and not a fucking cookie? You know, it's like ginger dead man was like, a really shit version of child's play, you know, yeah. like this someone, who, a murderer or something who got caught in a, uh, a body of an object. In this case, it's a cookie. And when I say a cookie, he's actually about, he really, he's no bigger <laughs> than your hand. He really is small. 
it's just silly. It's a bit like that that film series I didn't mention, Puppet Master, but I watched like five oh, yeah. of those. I actually quite like Puppet Master. I, 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 I watched them when I was young. I like Puppet Master. I like <laughs> Leprechaun. I like dolls. Oh, you like Troll 2, do you? I never watched Troll 2. <laughs> it's, 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 it's notorious, like. But I, w- but I wouldn't watch. I wouldn't rewatch any of those because I watched them as a kid, yeah. and that's why I like them. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you go revisit those, you'll probably not enjoy them. No, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't. That's why I wouldn't watch them again. Ginger Dead Man is so shit. <laughs> is there another one called, like, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or something? Oh, my goodness. That came out in the 70s, yeah. I was going to watch that one at one point, but that's pretty silly. Uh, <laughs> Killer Clowns from Outer Space is alright. Yeah, I have that on Blu-ray, still haven't seen it. Oh, Blu-ray? Yeah. That's, we'll have to watch that at some point. Yeah. That'll be interesting. But, like, looking at these really shit films, Asylum is, is a notor- notorious company. They made they made Ghost Shark, they made Sharknado, they made the Mega Shark, the Mega Shark, the Crocosaurus, the Mega <laughs> the, the, the I'm pretty sure it's like a giant crab one, too. And if you notice, Roger Corman has been on board with a lot of these really recent bad really? shit ones. Yeah, like this bad CGI ones as well. Um, He's been producing loads of them. What the hell? Uh, uh, what do you call that one? Not the legged freaks, but it's similar. Oh, uh, arachno, arachno, arachnoids, or something. Arachnoids. I think the arachnoids, something like that. But something he's like done that. loads of those. He's he's been he, he's produced like 150 films, and a lot yeah. of them are those well, he's keeping busy. shitty B movies yeah. that probably get screened in two places. Yeah, that's true. Well, a lot of his films were B movies as well. So. True, but I can call him. He's a legend. Yeah, you can't really can't really compare the two. Yeah, but like. I just don't like the way things have went. It's so bad, it's good. I mean, if that's all we're, we're expecting from it now, I think that that's pretty sad. Yeah, I think it's fair enough if, if it's sort of like a form of satire, but I think once they become the norm, once people like, once they once they start getting mass appeal, you're like... Because now, now it's, getting, the, I think it's getting to the point now, filmmakers are conscious of how it's being consumed, how yeah. people are watching it, so they know that they're making it bad almost deliberately. and. Yeah. I don't know. It's just part of, part of me is annoyed because I like satire, that, but yeah, yeah, part of me is annoyed because that money that they spent making it could have gone towards a better project. Exactly, a good fucking yeah, like solid piece of work. Yeah, from like not even from like an up and coming director, like like a like a film student who's just making his uh, first film or whatever. So it's, it's even yeah. something like with a more uh, groundbreaking clipping, it put in the documentary or something, the explore somewhere no one's talked about yet. Yeah, you know? just waste of money. Yeah, yeah, I can see why. And thought. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God help anyone else to work in those films. How do people come up, sit around the table and go, you know what, we're going to have a tornado, we're going to have a shark, we're going to put them together. They probably like, okay, everyone, write down a word, it could be a thing, a place, <laughs> it could be an object, and then uh, we'll get three and they'll go, you know, they'll, push them all together. They'll be like, hmm, let's, let's see here. What have you wrote? We've wrote down... Crocosaurus. Crocosaurus. <laughs> a mega shark. And, and world show. domination. <laughs> I have an idea. Just, yeah. Just throw it all in. Same with Sharknado. Yeah. Uh, well, the boy put in like a natural disaster and uh, fucking Cross object. sharks. I've got it. Sharknado. You know. That's insane. Shark loom. Oh, shark loom. Shark yeah. cyclone. <laughs> shark. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, it's a, sh- it's, it's a cyclone because it's in water. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Me. But like, that's, that's what's happened. Yeah. And that's they're nice. so bad and you're going to see a lot of those pop up in my top 10 most, uh, I mean, the fact that I can only pick 10 top 10 worst horror films, because there's so many. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like, coming down to the wrap up, what we can say about it is it's a genre that probably has the lowest quality of films. It's probably a bit like what happened to the Western, because yeah. um, it, it just got repetitive and formulaic. And I mean, there's so many damn Westerns, all those old ones, there's so many. Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of great ones too, of course, but yeah. the Westerns died out simply because... The Westerns mostly died out. You've had a, you have a couple. You have Hell or High... No, Hell or High... Is what it was. Hell or High Water came out, which yeah. is meant to be incredibly yeah. good. Scored by Nick Cave. But, um, and then you have Boom Tomahawk, which was an interesting take on the genre, and it was horror as well. Yeah. And it was actually quite effective. Um, yeah. But... Uh, this isn't a Western discussion. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was about to mention Slow West. But oh, yeah, Slow West is great. <laughs> um, but overall, I think the horror genre, like, I think the horror genre is great. Some of my favourite films are horror films. There's a lot of great ones. Mm-hmm. But it seems like finding a good one these days because my expectations have been shattered mm-hmm. so low. Even when I see something like, I don't know, The, the Conjuring, I get excited because I'm like, this is actually not, I can actually watch it. Yeah. I might not watch it again, but I can actually sit here and like kind of watch it mm-hmm. and not, you know, be totally put off by it. Yeah. And I think the standards just gone lower yeah. because of that. I mean, 
I'm one. I'm one of those people that will. I mean, I love. I mean, horror is one of my favorite genres. And it's one of the most. What I love about it is how diverse it is. How, how much you can sort of fit into that sort of genre of horror. Horror. Yeah, um, it's got lots of subgenres. Yeah. You know. Um, and I'm one of those people who will happily watch generic eighties slasher number three. And you a know, fan of those things. You know, yeah. Chopping Mall. Yeah, yeah, Chopping Mall. Um, Black Christmas. Uh, not Black Christmas. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Love that. Um, but yeah. I just feel that recently they've become a bit flat and dead. You know, at least in those eighties films, they had a bit of charm. They had a bit of fun. Yeah, I think it's kind of like because just because we're looking back at it retrospectively, yeah. it's got it. It just feels like pure eighties keys. You know, yeah. the soundtracks, the use of effects, the yeah. editing, all that stuff. But it, even I would argue that even then they were sort of they weren't meant to be masterpieces. They were just meant to be. But fun. I love some of those B, B yeah, movies. I, I love Basket like Case. I thought that. Oh, I Basket actually, Case is very strange. It's I I, I kind of like Basket Case two and three as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just feel that, I don't know, nowadays, a lot of them, although a lot of them have become sort of self-aware and, you know, satire, um, but I feel like a lot of them are also taking themselves way too seriously. Yeah. And uh, it's sad to see the demise of such a good genre. So has the horror genre died? I think it has to an extent. Because, I mean, I'm not, I do like horror films. It's definitely not one of my favourite genres. But I am quite a fan of what has been done in the horror genres. A lot of great ones, you know, that really play on... Uh, what we've been talking about, your natural fears and mm-hmm. um, human human conditions, really. And overall, I think hope isn't lost, but we're definitely not going to see another exorcist, I don't think. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to... Well, something that hits people that hard, I think. I think we really have had their stage of we're just too desensitized. I don't think there's anything that can shock us anymore. Yeah, I mean, even... We're, we're, I think we're desensitized to real violence as well, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. ISIS beheading videos. Like, I, right. I know people yep. who just watch those. Like, what are you doing? I know what you mean. I, I couldn't watch those. I couldn't watch those. I know um, what you mean. That's 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 a topic on its own. That is yeah. something that I take very seriously as yeah. well. That really real upsets violence. me. The people even... It's, it's what do you call that? Li- live leaks or something? Oh, uh, yeah, like live. live I mean, leak. that's it, yeah. People actually watch those things, you know, all for the time. Entertainment. For entertainment. But, but, but it's real, real gore and real sort of um, sad, like we're real um, tragedies. Like, why would you watch that? Uh, yeah, that's a topic on its own. Yeah. And we get, I, that, that is something that I could talk about a lot yeah. because it, it, it took journalism and everything. But yeah, we're yeah. desensitized because of like the way we access media now, yeah. you know, journalism and news. There's so much, there's nothing to shock us anymore. Yeah. I mean, all the war with the, that the world has seen yeah. at this point, all that yeah. sort of thing. And I think. That definitely ties into our reaction to uh, violence in in cinema yeah. today. Um, just, I mean, just uh, not to get off, talk, not to get too off dark. I feel uh, to conclude, I feel like I feel we're going through a lull of of the horror zone. I don't think it's died completely. I don't think I don't think it's dead. I feel like we're going through a lull. I feel like okay, we might not get something as good as The Exorcist or whatever, but I feel like we're slowly on the up because. You have Babadook, you have It Follows, you have... People are going to look back in like 20 years and go, okay, that was actually a pretty good period yeah. for her, you know, between now and maybe 2020. It'll be interesting to see where it goes, uh, definitely, sort of the evolution of, of horror. I just wonder where it is going to go next, you know? I mean, I feel everything has been done. It really has. It's exhausted. It's an exhausted genre. I hope something surprises me, because It Follows, I really enjoyed. Uh, the Witch, it, um, yeah. Really want it. Um, I feel like you could say that. Before, before, um, before, you know, Babadook came out, you could say everything's been done, and then that would have come out and surprised people. So. And then it kind of like makes you make well, maybe there is still. St- I mean, yeah, I think I think there's so many ideas for narrative in general. There's, so, yeah. there's definitely there's definitely going to be more stuff to come out that'll surprise us. And yeah, we'll see. is there anything you would like to say to, to wrap up? Funny statements. Um, not necessarily. Just uh, it'd be very interesting to see where. Uh, where it goes, yeah. where, where, where the genre is. Thank you everyone for stopping by. There's going to be plenty of links and images throughout this massive discussion. Massive, very massive video. Yeah. Um, it was great. It was actually fantastic to get to talk. It was it was like getting something off my chest to actually yeah. finally, because on my channel I don't rant very much. I don't really get to take the piss out of anything much or really talk about what upsets me in some movies. There it is, everyone. Um, <laughs> excellent discussion. I'll see you next time, everyone. Thanks for watching. Um, this is kind of towards the end of the marathon. Once I go to edit, it's being recorded in advance again. Thanks for stopping by. Anything you'd like to say? No, uh, just uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I, I'm glad I was able to, to make it on today. Totally. Go out there and watch some good horror films. Don't yes. go near. Don't uh, don't watch Ginger Dead Man. Yes. <laughs> that's that's my final statement. But do watch it, folks. Yeah. See you next time, everyone.
fjerdedel.